Hi, I'm Mary Colbert, and welcome to Dr. Colbert's Divine Health Podcast. And hey, I'm Dr. Colbert, and today we're going to be talking about something that I hear a complaint in so many men, and it is simply erectile dysfunction. And it's so interesting, Mary, that at the end of the appointment, I've been with them for almost an hour, and men will say, oh, by the way, do you have anything that can help me with ED? And I'm thinking, well, that's a whole new appointment. <laughs> and, you know, many times it's one of their main concerns, but I really need something for my ED, they say. So, you know what? We're going to put Dr. Colbert's advice and his instructions to help you in this area. If it concerns you, share it with your brothers, your fathers. And ladies, I know this may be something you're not too interested in, but I can guarantee you your husband's and sons and the males in your life, they're going to be interested to know about this. But also we're going to help women because so many women have low libido and we have some key things, some nutrients and exercise and dietary information that'll help women with low libido and especially certain hormones that we're going to talk about, natural bioidentical hormones that your doctors can prescribe if they're educated in this. And so, again, we're going to be discussing erectile dysfunction first. And first, we like to start with a definition. An ED, or erectile dysfunction, is simply the inability to get and maintain an erection that's firm enough for sexual intercourse. That's it. And we find a study has found, many multiple studies have found, around 52% of men experience some form of ED. And ED increases with age. And You say, well, what's the main cause of ED? There are multiple causes, but the main cause is vascular. Blood flow, blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. And there's also hormonal causes, low testosterone, as well as there's um, neurogenic causes, like from surgical procedures of the lumbar spine. It can be scar tissue. It can be degenerative joint disease. It can be osteoarthritis in the lumbar area. It can be multiple sclerosis or epilepsy. Also, one of the big causes, Mary, that is amazing is um, medications. There are so many meds that cause ED, and we're going to discuss these meds. In fact, about 25% of the cause of ED is medications. Well, I think um, on a serious note, people may blow off this podcast going, oh, I'm not interested in that. But hold on, hold on. You need to hear what Dr. Colbert has to say, because on a serious side— That part of the man's circulation is the first indication that something is beginning to narrow. Exactly. And this is so important. Yes. I like to tell men, that's why I talk to my men about, I explain to them that the penile artery, the artery in the penis is the size of a cocktail straw. The coronary artery. The cocktail straw, which is a little teeny, teeny, teeny teeny opening. Right. It's a little tiny straw that a lot of patients don't have cocktails. I don't either. But again, you've seen the size of that little teeny cocktail straw. It's tiny. Where a toothpick could barely fit into the opening. Well, that's the size of the penile artery. Now, the size of the coronary artery is the size of a regular straw. So we call it the canary in the coal mine. The first artery that starts to show diminished blood flow is usually the penile artery. And diminished blood flow is the symptom that's most common with diminished blood flow in the penile artery is ED. You can't get enough blood flow to inflate the penis or to have an erection. So if I were a man, I would be like really concerned, like, whoa, something has changed. And it's almost all, but blood flow is the major key. And it's not about sex, folks. This is not necessarily about sex, even though I understand that that's a big part of a man's life. But on a health side, folks, this is a very this is a warning sign. Right. This is your red light that the oil in your car is out. So that, it's yeah. not something you your should... engine's flashing, saying check the engine. Your right. engine light exactly. is flashing. So, ladies, if your husband's experiencing this for his sake, you need to get this corrected because or addressed or at least addressed. addressed. Right, because they may go. I'm not going to tell him because my libido is over and I don't care. You know. And, and I can understand that with women as they get older. They're like, I don't care to wake that up. But there's but multiple causes of ED. Exactly. So and that's just, what needs to not be ignored, ladies. But a primary cause of ED is blood flow. Blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. Right. And many times they have are starting to form plaque in their arteries, and it's usually the artery in the penis. That's the first 
artery that shows that up with amazing. poor blood flow. That's really and I'm amazing. seeing guys younger and younger that experience this. But also, now, that's what's alarming to right, me. Right, exactly. And so, again, uh, we, we find that many times it's related to diabetes. If a person has prediabetes or diabetes, you are forming plaque in your arteries, and especially in your penile artery, and you're going to be eventually having blood flow issues. Now, I would say about 40 to 50 percent of my patients are either diabetic or pre-diabetic, and they are forming ED. I check this on every patient I see. I check a hemoglobin A1C. If their hemoglobin A1C is 5.7 to 6.4, they're pre-diabetic. If they're 6.5 or higher, they're diabetic, and they are forming plaque in their arteries, not just in their arteries to their heart, but also arteries in the penis, arteries throughout their entire body, arteries in their feet, arteries in their brain. You are forming plaque. You're a plaque former, and it's critical to get that hemoglobin A1C lowered by following a healthy diet. And I've talked about this at length in many of my books, including Beyond Keto, The Keto Zone, Let Food Be Your Medicine, uh, What Would Jesus Eat? I've written many books on this topic. But what I do is I do a full blood panel. I'll check the hemoglobin A1C for the sugar. I'll check the inflammatory markers, such as the HSCRP, or the high-sensitive C-reactive protein. If you have tremendous inflammation, you're forming plaque. That simple. Let me tell you one of the main things that cause inflammation in the body, belly fat. The more belly fat you have, the more inflammation you have, and the more damage you are developing in your arteries and plaque forming you're developing. Now you say, well, what causes increased inflammation besides belly fat? Bad fats. And we're going to be talking about fats that heal and fats that kill. One of the most inflammatory fats on the planet are hydrogenated fats. I have a whole talk that I'm going to be doing, podcast I'm going to be doing on this, as well as deep fried foods. Deep fried foods are plaque forming because you have polyunsaturated fats that are heated and they are oxidized, which causes plaque to form in your arteries. So French fries, fried chicken, fried chicken nuggets, they are fried in these polyunsaturated fats like soybean oil, corn oil, and again, I have a whole podcast on this, but if you're eating these foods, you're forming plaque. Another test that we do that checks for if your body's forming plaque, or I do a lipid panel that checks the total testosterone, the LDL, the HDL, which is high density or good cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, and triglycerides. If your triglycerides are high, over 150 or literally over 100, you're forming plaque. If your cholesterol is high, you're probably forming plaque, especially if it's oxidized cholesterol. And we could do, take it a step further, and I go in detail in my book, The Keto Zone, about cholesterol, about oxidized cholesterol. We can measure oxidized cholesterol, which is the most atherogenic cholesterol. If it's over 60, you're forming plaque. Most doctors never check that. Other things that we check are homocysteine levels, or other blood work. If your homocysteine level is high, you are forming plaque. You say, but I've never heard of the term homocysteine. What is homocysteine? Well, I'm just finishing a book called The Brain Zone, and homocysteine is one of the most toxic amino acids that forms in the body. Usually, we're genetically prone to it. I, unfortunately, have the genes that make my homocysteine elevated, and especially if you have an elevated or a mutation in the MTHFR gene for folic acid, then most likely your homocysteine's high. If your homocysteine is greater than seven, you are actually forming plaque, you're degenerating brain neurons, or your brain will eventually start to degenerate, and you'll also be prone to develop osteoporosis. The higher the homocysteine, the greater the inflammation in the arteries, and uh, the greater the plaque formation. I used to have a homocysteine level of 13, which is too high, and again, it needs to be ideally less than seven. Now, I see on the lab work, I just saw a homocysteine normal lab, and it says zero to 21. If your homocysteine level is in the high teens or 21, you are forming plaque. And so, again, that's why homocysteine needs to be addressed and needs to be lowered. It's simple how to lower it, just the active forms of B vitamins, especially folic acid, are enough to lower it. And again, I've I've got a, we'll have podcasts on this later, but homocysteine is important. Other lab tests that help include optimizing testosterone levels, 
to a healthy level, usually around 750, and lowering estrogen in men. Estrogen is too much estrogen or too little estrogen actually is not good for testosterone. It'll actually affect testosterone and it'll affect libido as well as trigger ED. Another major one is blood pressure. We've got to get the blood pressure down. It just so happens one of the meds that cause ED the most are high blood pressure meds, especially diuretics, thiazide diuretics, and beta blockers. Those are the two big meds for high blood pressure that cause ED. Now, there's certain blood pressure meds that actually help ED, and these are your ARB, A-R-B, angiotensin receptor blockers, ARB, and these include Kozar, Olmosartan, Benicar, Losartan, Telmisartan, Herbisartan, Avapro, Kozar, Diavan, and Micartus. Those are your ARB medications that lower blood pressure and don't cause ED. So if you're having ED and you're taking a beta blocker, such as Tenormin, Metoprolol, Atenolol, uh, any of these beta blockers or hydrochlorothiazide or diazide or maxide, those are diuretics and beta blockers that cause ED. That's a, those are the main causes of ED is, are the hyper, antihypertensive meds in the form of beta blockers and thiazide diuretics. Okay, so again, let's talk about meds that cause ED because about 25% of the causes of ED are your medications your doctor's prescribing. So as far as the meds that cause this most commonly are antidepressants, antipsychotics, antiandrogens, antihypertensives, and as well as your enlarged prostate meds and meds for male pattern baldness. Now, we have found that SSRIs, such as Lexapro, Prozac, Zoloft, Celexa, these, ca these cause erectile dysfunction in a lot of men and uh, problems with premature ejaculation and sexual dysfunction. The main medicine that causes erectile dysfunction in young men is finasteride or Propecia that doctors put young men on for uh, hair loss. And there's one study that found in 71 individuals aged 21 to 46 showed that finasteride used for male pattern baldness caused sexual side effects, including 92% who reported ED. And so that's with finasteride. So if you are taking Propecia or finasteride or Dutasteride or Avidart or Jalen and you have ED, that's the cause. Now, we do have the answer. We're going to be talking about the answer a little later on. There's also neuroleptics or drugs that we use for schizophrenics and bipolar patients like Zyprexa or uh, Haldol or Thorazine or any of the other types of neuroleptics increase prolactin level, and that also causes ED in men. So again, a lot of the meds that doctors are prescribing are all triggering ED. Contraceptives that women use uh, also decrease libido in women commonly. So again, anti-epileptic meds can also trigger ED. Another major drug that causes ED is aldactone that's used for acne, especially in women, and, but also in men. Uh, doctors put men on aldactone or spironolactone, and it causes ED. Steroids like prednisone can cause ED. It lowers serum testosterone levels. And those are the main classes, but I, I've got over 100 medications listed here that trigger ED. Antidepressants trigger them. Antihistamines like, for example, Phenergan, Vistaril, Benadryl. Benadryl over-the-counter can trigger ED, and most people don't know that, as well as Tagamet or Cimetidine or Zantac or Anavert that we use for dizziness. A lot of people are on Anavert. causes ED for a lot of people. We talked about high blood pressure meds, especially beta blockers and diuretics. Also, Parkinson's meds, such as Harlodel, Cinemet, Cogentin, as well as uh, androgen therapy, hormonal meds, and androgen blockers like Casadex. Also, Lupron, Aldactone we talked about. Other meds like lipid-lowering agents, clofibrate. Raglan, which is used for gastric emptying, and NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen. Well, let me just ask you this, Todd. Maybe the list is shorter. 
What can you take that it doesn't cause ED? Mary, <laughs> it's amazing how so many meds cause ED, but also recreational drugs. Alcohol is a big cause of ED. Marijuana, huge cause for ED. Heroin, nicotine, cocaine. One of the major causes of ED is smoking because it affects that artery and blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. <laughs> so it's mm. mainly the main trigger for ED is poor blood flow and meds. Stress? Stress will also aggravate it, but it's not, it's not necessarily, a, it's a easily reversible because when you reverse the stress, the ED clears. It's a nagging simple. girlfriend or wife? Well, it, yes, it could be. <laughs> but again, the main causes are blood flow. Also, another cause is Pyrone's disease in mm -hmm. men. That men, many men get a curvature of the penis due to scar tissue. And that scar tissue occurs many times because of masturbation. Yeah, absolutely. And that is one reason why, biblically, you don't do it. Exactly. Because you could be setting yourself up for a a major problem up the road. And that's where they have advertisements on TV where you have the carrot that's all, the carrot that's curved. And now they're injecting this medication called Zyaflex, which is collagenase, which literally dissolves the scar tissue. Urologists are doing that. But that's another cause. But you know, Don, pornography is a problem because sure. people, young guys who get hooked on pornography at a young age and start, you know, the addiction of pornography they can't they have a tougher and a bigger bigger problem with getting an erection because the, the addiction to pornography right. has perverted it right for them. exactly now they cannot get excited unless they have those pictures in so their there's mind. so many reasons why right. when exactly. you look biblically and you go into the word of god and that's that's what the basis for everything that we believe so when you stick to what the word is you're going to live a longer, healthier, more enjoyable life. It's when you deviate off that path and you have to get on all these meds because you don't take care of your body and you're not doing things, you know, that you need to do to take care of yourself. So now you're on all these meds and drugs and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And then your body starts having those side effects. It's like, duh, right. to me, it's like, duh, you know, just... Follow the word of God. Let let the light of God be your guide. Well, Mary, there's pornography induced ED. Right. Where literally they cannot men, uh, young men, young many men. times cannot have an erection without pornography. And we're seeing more and more of this. And, and so, the pornography has to be very funky, vile, 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 vile pornography. The more right. vile. I mean, it's like it is just. Sick. Right. It's so, sick. What's so happening? Let's talk about other causes. Again, these are causes of ED, and there's so many causes. That's why a person comes in and they tell me at the last second of their visit, oh, by the way, give me a little something for ED, like it's uh, just give me a little silver bullet. There's no silver bullet. We have to figure out the cause. Many times it takes me a full 30 minutes to figure out the main triggers. Many times it's multifactorial. Many times it's blood flow, elevated blood sugar, more inflammation, elevate triglycerides, elevate cholesterol, elevate blood pressure, none of exercise, none of good healthy fats, too much bad fats, it damage circulation. But again, another trigger for ED is soy, a high soy diet. Wow. I am because soy increases estrogen and mm. lowers testosterone. And so many men are taking in too much. So I don't even like any soy for men. You say, wait, you mean... I put, I have my uh, cappuccino with soy milk. Well, no wonder you've got ED. Mm -hmm. Or you're eating tofu, edamame, or um, tempeh, or, you know, these soy meats, these mystery meats. Cut out the soy. Soy causes a lot of ED for a lot of yeah, guys. Yeah, you go to the Asian restaurants and they bring out these beans that, what are they? Edamame. 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 Yeah. That's now, it's I'm... okay for women, but guys, stay away from that stuff. Mm, and I am I guarantee you there's <laughs> okay, guys listening yeah. right now going, oh, Well, they've been man. doing, oh, man, my wife's been feeding me out of mommy. She loves them, and she gives them to me, and I'm wondering why I've got ED. I'm just, that's because I'm ODing on edamame. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you may have just given some women some ideas that they didn't know. That's uh, right. Gotta, so they're going to say, I'm going to get my I'm husband gonna, eating this out of mom to co- right. cool I'm them down. Cool him down to <laughs> once right. a month. That's right. Once a month. <laughs> That's right. And so many women, as when they hit that menopause age, they think, oh, my goodness, my libido's done, so i got to make sure my husband's is done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know. This is not funny. I know it is funny, but it's not funny. <laughs> Other causes of ED is low thyroid. Now, I wrote a whole book on uh, endocrine problems, including low testosterone, high estrogen, low estrogen, low thyroid, hyperthyroid. All of those can cause ED, Mary. So yeah. that's why I check all of that when I do a blood test. And unfortunately, most doctors are just checking maybe the lipid panel and the chemistry and the blood count and the urine, and that's it. But you've got to check all of this. You've got to know what the infl- inflammatory markers are doing. If you've got excessive inflammation, you are asking for ED poor, due to p- poor blood flow. So, again, we, now we've talked about the problem. Another th- common thing, I've got to tell this to guys, it's the wallet in your back pocket. When you are wearing a wallet in your back pocket, you are unfortunately throwing out your SI joint, you could be degenerating your lower lumbar disc. You could be triggering osteoarthritis in your lower lumbar, and you could be triggering ED. Get the wallet out of your back pocket. This is one thing I do for all my men. When they come in and I check them, I always check their SI joints, their lower lumbar areas. It's so amazing how so many men have jammed their lower lumbar wow. disc. Wow. They are pinching these nerves, and they're triggering ED. Wow. It's Mary. It's Crazy. and again, that's another trigger of ED. As wow. we age, we degenerate our disc. We inflame our facet joints and our spine, uh, mainly due to just a poor diet and too much trauma, and wallets. Wallets in the back pocket. And so, pull the wallet out of your back. You say, where do I put it? I keep my wallet. I have my phone wallet. I put it in my front pocket, and I have just a few credit well, cards. That's what's cool is now they have right. these phone wallets that you can literally put your phone, your credit cards, and mm-hmm. it's slim, and it'll fit in your I just put it in my front pocket. pocket. Yeah. yeah, or your shirt pocket in your front. But years you know. ago, I used to sit on that wallet, and I used to, you know, ride with the wallet in my back pocket, and I was wondering why my back and my hip was always hurting. This was 25 years ago. I cut that out 25 years ago. You know ago. what? They need to sew up all the back pockets They should. all the pants. Absolutely. <laughs> well, wear cargo pants. Another <laughs> thing I got, we got to talk to you about this, too, since we're on this topic. A lot of people are driving these little sports cars, and they're complaining of pain in their knees because when they get out of their car, they twist their knee. And they're mm-hmm. literally inflaming their knees. When they get out, they've got to twi- they got to turn their body and not twist their knee, or they're going to inflame their knee. Those are two common things that happen to pa- patients. So they have that wallet in their back pocket. They got these little low down sports cars. That's why I have a nice Escalade that's <laughs> high up, so I don't I know, stress but I, my knees. I have a low sports car, and I've learned a long time ago because I kept throwing my SI joint out, swinging my left leg out to get out of the car because it's so low down but you taught me to swing both legs around at the same time before getting out exactly and it's not real putting all my weight on one leg and, and twisting it twisting because infla- infla- you used to have inflammation there and i kept saying I mary you're twisting that yep. knee That's and you're inflaming it and it works it, you it know does. you get in the car with both legs outside the car and then once you sit in the seat then you lift both legs and put them in together and it makes all the difference in the world. I never have an issue anymore. So, again, you see with ED, it's, uh, it's mainly finding out the cause. It's usually blood flow. Most, most commonly, it's blood flow. It could be hormonal. It could be low testosterone. It also could be some back injury or some surgery you've had. It could be a medication. It could be soy. It could be diabetes. It could be not enough exercise. And, uh, again, I used to have this Firehawk that was like a Trans Am. And this car was amazing. It was so fast. But again, I didn't drive it a lot. I like to save it, you know, and kind of drive it on the weekend. But eventually it got to where I just let it sit for a couple of months, and then it just wouldn't run right. So I took it in. I'll never forget the mechanic. He said, listen, this car is meant to take it on the highway and floor it and blow out the pipes, he said. (laughs) Literally blow out the exhaust, blow out the pipes. You know, get the blow out the carbon out of it so it doesn't gum it up. So it can literally, it'll run best when you literally take it out and just gun it. Our body is real similar. We find that exercise improves blood flow. 
when you increase your exercise to five or six days a week, and even if it's just 20 minutes, it's going to improve blood flow. It's going to improve blood flow throughout your whole body, especially men through the penile artery. Now, even better, once you have done exercise for a few months and you have a healthy heart and you're not prone to heart disease with lots of risk factors, if you are, see a doctor, have a stress test to see, to see if you can do high-intensity interval training. What I love to do is I love to go to the gym and I love to get on the recumbent bike and I love to do high intensity interval training. And doing this, it's similar to blowing out the pipes on the Firehawk so that literally you start to improve your circulation. So what I'll do is I'll go and I'll get on the recumbent bike and they have a wonderful one at LA Fitness. And I first warm up for about two minutes at a, at a heart rate of about 100, 110. And then I crank it up to as high a resistance as, as it goes to 30. And I go all out as hard as I can for one minute. Now, my heart rate will go up to about 140, 150. And I'll do that for a minute. Then I'll crank it back down to half speed about and instead of 30, which is the highest, I'll crank it down to 10 to 15 for a minute. And I keep doing that for about 10 to 12 minutes. And it literally improves blood thro flow throughout my entire body. Then I'll cool down for a couple of minutes. If you can do that, uh, but you've got to make sure that your heart is healthy. I don't want anyone doing that and having a stroke. So make sure that you're checked by your doctor, have an EKG, or just simply do it moderately for a few months until you're ready to go into high-intensity interval training. That improves blood flow. Exercise is the key to improving blood flow. Modify It'll also modify these risk factors. It'll lower the CRP. You'll burn off belly fat. Remember, the more belly fat you have, the higher the CRP is and the more inflammation you have and the more plaque you're going to have. Also, change the diet. When you change the diet and you put in living foods, living oils, they start to lower the inflammation. Remember, the most inflammatory foods we eat are mainly deep fried foods and trans fats. And the foods that contain these are the foods that taste the best, the French fries, the fried chicken. Those are full of inflammatory fats that literally affect your blood flow, as well as ice cream and sugar and trans fat that's in uh, donuts and icing and pizza dough and things like that and biscuits. And again, we have a whole podcast we're doing on good fats, bad fats. I encourage you to listen to this because if you're eating a lot of fried foods and trans fats, you are asking for poor blood flow and you are asking for ED. It's as simple as that. So you've got to get to the root and you say, well, what foods do I eat? What foods help ED? Well, the Mediterranean diet. I wrote a whole book on this called Beyond Keto or Keto. And these are healthy fats like olive oil and avocado oil and nuts and seeds and also, you can have macadamia nut oil, almond oil, and those are wonderful fats, as well as veggies, as well as, you know, your, your healthier carbs. There's too many people that eat a lot of high sugar carbs that convert to sugar. Healthier carbs are like chickpeas, hummus, beans, peas, lentils. Now, if they hurt your gut, pressure cook them seven and a half minutes or take some beano, three beanos beforehand, and you'll be fine. Okay, so uh, we've got to change the diet. We've got to exercise. We also want to optimize our testosterone levels. I have a whole book on this called The Hormone Zone. And I find men do best if their testosterone's around 700 to 1,000. They feel wonderful. And if you've got low testosterone levels, and low testosterone is getting lower and lower because men's testosterones are dropping lower and lower. And now it's defined as a testosterone level, usually less than around 260. And so that's if your level's 260, guys, you feel horrible. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, a lot of my women like their testosterone to 260. Right. <laughs> we, we, actually, we have a great podcast on right. the hormone zone. So if you haven't heard that, you need to tune right. into we it. Right. we got to boost testosterone up, and guys, you got to lower the estrogen. If you have high estrogen or low estrogen, you, you can forget having, um, you know, normal erections. You can forget. So that's important that you we get those balanced. And I check those on every man I see and every woman. And, yes, women, you need testosterone too. So, again, now to help those people with back pain, let me just give you this, because not only do we need to remove the wallet, 
something that helps a lot of you is just getting the hang up. There's uh, this hang up machine. I like the teeter hang up better. A lot of my patients have done this and it's taken the pressure off those nerves. And in some guys, it helps their ED. I'm not saying it's used for everyone, but it does help people with that chronic lower back pain. And when those nerves are being compressed or pinched, you're more likely to have ED. Now, how do we improve blood flow? There are some simple things we can do. Olive oil is one of my, there's two oils I like the most, olive oil and fish oil, okay? Now, there's new forms of olive oil called high polyphenol olive oil. This is a whole new class of olive oils. And one of my favorites you can get online called Hermus, H-E-R-M-U-S. And you can even get it on, uh, on Amazon. And it's high polyphenol. You say, what, why are, what are polyphenols? Why are they so important? Polyphenols are these amazing antioxidants that improve blood flow. And there's 36 polyphenols in olive oil. The most powerful by far is oleocanthal. But again, these are from, the oleocanthal comes from early harvested olives and it's much more expensive. So many people just can't afford it. So a great inexpensive form of olive oil that really improves, improves the blood flow are high polyphenol olive oils such as uh, Hermes. That's a good one, okay? Now, what else improves blood flow? Well, pomegranate juice. Now, guys, uh, you say, uh, pomegranate juice, doesn't that high in sugar? Well, pomegranate juice has tremendous beneficial effects on blood flow, guys. And so you can get uh, pomegranate juice like Palm Wonderful and just take about two ounces or you can go up to four ounces twice a day. And But again, I tell patients it's good, too, to combine that with some olive oil so you don't get the sugar spiking effects. Yes, eight ounces of pomegranate juice has 33 grams of sugar, so I don't want a lot of pomegranate, but a little bit. And I take a little twice a day, usually two ounces twice a day, because it does improve blood flow, and it does help a lot of my men with ED. Yeah, and you do it like in a little shot glass. Yeah, size. exactly. Exactly. I don't overdo it. And the other thing we find that helps ED and blood flow in men and blood pressure, it lowers blood pressure naturally, is a supplement called Neo, N-E-O-40. This contains beetroot, hawthorn berry, and citrulline, which is an amino acid similar to arginine, and it improves blood flow. And I take one twice a day, and I do that because it's just as, as we age, our blood flow eventually becomes impaired. It increases nitric oxide, and it helps with blood flow. Another is fish oil. Fish oil is wonderful for blood flow. You like the omega fish oil. Right. Now, we have salmon oil. We have krill, and you can get those. On I, our website. Right. Yeah. And so I like, I take a lot of fish oil, and I do it every day. I take it in the morning and the evening, and I take about 2,000 units twice a day, as well as resveratrol. Resveratrol is found in red grape skins. It's also found in red wine. I don't like alcohol, but I do love the effects of resveratrol. I take a supplement and you can take usually 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice a day of resveratrol, which is great for blood flow. Other nutrients that improve blood flow include pycnogenol or pine bark extract or grape seed extract, usually about 120 milligrams a day. It is amazing how that improves blood flow as well as ED in, in studies. And you can get that online. It's cheap, and it really improves blood flow. A combination that helps a lot of men is a combination of either pycnogenol or pine bark or grape seed, 80 to 120 milligrams with L-arginine aspartate. Now, L-arginine is an amino acid. I put a lot of teenagers on this to help them boost their growth hormone levels so they can grow taller. And I've done, been doing this for about 30 years and helped a lot of kids grow taller. But also in men, if you take this on an empty stomach an hour or two before intercourse, usually start at 3 grams, but increase up to 8 grams with the pycnogenol or pine bark or grapeseed, 80 milligrams. It improves blood flow tremendously and works like, um, you know, Viagra or one of these other phosphodiesterase inhibitors. And also add a little pomegranate to it, too, about 2 to 4 ounces. Now, for men, we have these the meds that work uh, to help ED are the phosphodiesterase inhibitors. They include, uh, you know, Viagra, which is uh, sildenafil. It's generic now, so it's real cheap. But you could take 50 to 100 milligrams. You can get a generic. 
and but you, it needs to be on an empty stomach and it does help a lot of men but it does cause flushing and if you take it with food it's not going to be near as effective another new one we have is called stendra very expensive it's 200 milligrams some of my guys tell me it's the silver bullet for ed and we help them get that from Canada, from a Canadian pharmacy, because they save a tremendous amount of money on that for my patients. Uh, and also, there's a new peptide called PT-141. And PT-141 is simply a natural peptide that's a nose spray. And it helps many of my men with ED. And so we've been using this for the past few years. And uh, when you combine it, especially with either Viagra or Tadalafil, now we use a Tadalafil sublingual, uh, which is Cialis, that works really good. The, the, uh, the key thing with Tadalafil or Cialis is it helps men with, with enlarged prostate and it helps men with ED. But when you combine it with the PT-141, it works synergistically. And I use that in a lot of men, and it's a great way uh, to improve is tremendously ED without side effects. There is a natural supplement. I have to explain to a lot of men because we've been using this for over 15 years, or excuse me, 20 years in men with ED, and it's called Max Nox, M-A-X-N-O-X Specialist. It has L-arginine, citrulline, and watermelon seed extract. And a lot of young guys love this, and older guys love it. You just take it on an empty stomach, and it works amazing for guys. The key is, again, follow the, uh, the Mediterranean diet or my Beyond Keto diet, especially taking that Hermes high polyphenol olive oil, aerobic exercise. Remember, blow the pipes out, mm -hmm. but don't blow out your heart. Start low, go slow. Just start moving, exercise. Exercise the best thing for blood flow. Lower your blood sugar. And then there's a, there's a new device called a Gaines Wave or Acoustic Wave Therapy. It's a shock wave therapy. It literally breaks up the plaque in the penile artery, and it restores blood flow. And you can find this online under Gaines Wave, G-A-I-N-S Wave, or Acoustic Wave Therapy. And many urologists are doing this now. And finally, uh, a few things that help, too, are taking our hormone zone. It helps to balance your hormones. Taking our testosterone zone, it helps amazing for decreased libido. And then fish oil and krill oil and following the Beyond Keto diet. Now, Mayor, I'd like to talk about low libido in women because we don't want to neglect our women. They don't have ED, but so many women have low libido. Don, you've, you've got so much information that it just is amazing. You, you're you just a prolifer of information. Well, that's why I want a person, Mary, that's I why when a man comes in and says, hey, by the way, give me some free D. By, I, you know, say, well, that's an hour appointment. That's another hour appointment. <laughs> We've just spent almost an hour talking about it. Listen, go to our website, drcolbert.com, divinehealth.com. Go visit our website and take a look at our products that he's talked about and see which ones that work out for you in his books. There's so many things we have on there to assist you in walking in divine health. And please remember to share the website. I mean, not website, but yeah, I'll do that too. But to share the podcast with your friends and your family. That helps us. Um, the more you share, the more it helps our ministry. And we really uh, appreciate you partnering with us in that. So, Don, until next time. Well, Mary, we're going to tell them this is found in my Beyond Keto book, a lot of this information, and okay. my Hormone Zone book. Okay. And some key supplements that will improve blood flow. Again, Hormone Zone, Testosterone Zone. Great. So okay, great till next flow. time, God, God bless, bless you and walk in divine, divine health. health. Amen.